Hi, I'm Rob Ida from Rob Ida Concepts in Morganville, New Jersey. And I'm here today at the Eastwood Company. And I have Jack Kiley's 1940 Merc that was built by my team and myself. And I'd like to show you the car. So I think the most important part of this car is the shape of it. So if we look at what we originally started with, the 1940 Merc shape wasn't one that was known as, as the most beautiful silhouette um, in car design. But it was a great blank canvas, and it was an excellent way for people to, um, to take something and easily improve upon it. So for years, people have been custom, uh, customizing 1940 Mercs, and they've pretty much the same form, which was a Barris car uh, built in the, in the late 40s. And, and it's always been kind of the, uh, the staple of, of, of customizing a 1940 Merc. So we decided that we wanted to do something a little different and, and make our own original a version of a customized Merc. So this one is a is a three window uh, silhouette and a lot of people um, see the similarity between that and the Lincoln Zephyr. E.T. Gregory and Etzel Ford designed both the Lincoln and the Mercury and they did that so that they could bring a, uh, a more stylish design to the Ford Motor Company. The problem was when they got to the Mercury Coupe they ended up using a leftover roof cap from a 37 Ford because they ran out of time and, and money. So that was our opportunity to come in and maybe do something that was our interpretation of what we imagined Etzel Ford may have really been trying to achieve when he was building a car for the 1939 Autorama in, um, in, in Paris. So we've gone ahead and moved the windshield down into the cowl. We laid the eight pillars back and then we made from this section of the roof all the way back and the entire back of the car has been remade. Um, the, Front fender skirts actually steer with the wheels, and we'll show you how that works. So the skirt is moving at a different rate than the wheel. The wheel moves more and faster than the skirt does. The skirt moves just out of the way to not contact the tire. That leads into these um, running board covers that you would have seen on a later uh, 40s car and into a teardrop style uh, rear fender. Originally, the door came, came down and tucked in hard at the bottom, and it had a rubber running board with a big gap in between and it was kind of a clumsy area. So um, we integrated the, uh, the running board into the body and into the door skin, and it wraps around the fender. These openings that are cut into the hood side come all the way back into the door skin, and it just gives a real, a real gentle highlight line. Um, the, uh, the hood is arrowed, pinched, and rolled down slightly so that it gives it a less massive um, appearance but it doesn't really change the identity of the Merc nose. The grill is, is taller, there are more bars, and goes deeper into the body uh, than the original Merc did, but it's almost un unidentifiable. I think it lays the proportions out better in the car, um, but you probably wouldn't look at it and say, oh, that's a bigger grill than stock. So I think that we, we made very, very subtle and careful changes when we modified the car, and we did that uh, so that we were only making what we see as improvements to a design. And we didn't come at it hard with a, with a hammer and a, and a saw um, just for the sake of, of changing the car around. We did everything with good reason. And um, so the steerable skirt, in order to remove it, to change a tire, you have access through the headlight. So there's a touch sensor here on the headlight and the headlight opens electronically. And all the, all the mechanisms and components on things like this are modern in technology, but period correct in styling. So you don't see any of the modern mechanical parts that it takes to do that. So if you look in here, you'll see modern suspension, but it's done, it's presented in a way that looks almost period correct. Um, lots of small details, like these, these bumper brackets have been fabricated um, so that they, they're just smaller and, and lighter than the original piece. And um, this hood bubble, was normally a, a circle. Now it comes down and has continuity with this line. This hood was normally one piece. We split it here and we took some, some height out of it and we rolled the hood top down and we narrowed it up. The, the front fender is basically stock from about here up and then the rest of it has been made. The bumper is, um, is a reshaped original bumper. So now it, it, it hugs the nose of the car and, and the bumper brackets have, have been made so that they integrate nicely into the body. The windshield has been lowered down into the cowl, so this area is smaller than, than the original car. 
and there's also less what we call forehead. So the windshield has also been raised up into the body. So if you were to calculate how much was removed out of the A-pillar, the windshield in proportion is actually bigger. So there was more, more material taken out of the metal than was taken out of the glass. And proportionately, I believe, now everything lines up and, and is better. Um, we, we did go through the effort of keeping vent windows and hardware like rivets and, um, and things like that to make the car uh, really an authentic uh, look and feel of an old car. We didn't want to lose that. The A-pillar has been laid back uh, quite a bit and the door length is stock. So the, the, uh, the, the door length is stock but it did have originally the windshield or the, the side window post would have come up at 90 degrees here and then had a quarter window here. We, we made new rain gutters so that they look factory. Uh, the, the, the operational vent windows all look factory. The the vent window post has even been laid back two and a half degrees. So it's probably not something that you would even notice, but it really does make a lot of difference when you look at the car. It, it makes the roof look faster. So it has like hard top or roadster style uh, door panel tops. And if you look at the, the way the, the door jams and thresholds are made, they look like they could have been by a French coach builder. The seat is a modified original seat. The steering wheel is a 1950 Monterey uh, accessory wheel. And the, uh, the dash gauges are the original gauges that have been relocated into a, a newly designed dashboard. So the back of the car has been reshaped and, uh, and, and made. It has custom curved rear glass. So the rear glass has the same contour as the sheet metal, which gives us a consistent reflection line. Um, new tail lights and, uh, and rear body panel. You can see the way the rear fender tapers, tapers back like a French car would. All this trim has been, uh, been made out of steel and then chrome plated. This is a modern engine. It's a, it's a, uh, a 2009 Shelby GT500, so it makes 660 horsepower. And it's all modern in technology, just the way it was built by Ford Motor Company. And we designed all these parts in here to give it a period correct um, presentation. So we made valve covers that look similar to an Arden, uh, which would have been a flathead overhead valve conversion, a supercharger. This tank is for the intercooler. So the intercooler uh, liquid is stored in this tank and plumbed through these would look like air cleaners, but they're not. They're actually ice boxes. So you could, you could pack these with ice and there's coils inside. So the intercooler liquid can, uh, can get cooled off if, if you wanted. The, the coldest possible air charge. So the air intake comes out of the back of the supercharger into the firewall. There's a soundproof box in, under the firewall and it gets its air through the original cow panel. So that cow vent right here is throttle position sensitive. So if I turn the key on, you'll see that it'll open up enough for the car to idle. And as I apply throttle with, at, at the gas pedal, it opens in proportion to the th uh, throttle blade. So that's where the engine's getting its, its cool air from. I'm Rob Ida from Rob Ida Concepts in Morganville, New Jersey, and this is Jack Kiley's 1940 Mercury.